Hello and welcome to World Parkinson's program uh, live Facebook session. Uh, we will be taking questions. Uh, thank you for joining uh, us uh, in Toronto uh, because of time change, daylight saving. So this is uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Please uh, feel free to uh, forward information about the live uh, sessions to your friends and others so they can join us too and uh, ask us uh, questions if they like. These sessions are for the educational purposes only uh, and uh, we try to answer the questions to the best of our capability. So. <clears throat> The treatment of patients is dependent upon their own physicians. We have a question here. Is weight loss uh, affected by Parkinson's? I mean, they, need, they, they are saying that uh, does Parkinson's disease cause weight loss? Uh, yes, weight loss becomes a problem in Parkinson's patients as the disease advances. Uh, in the beginning, patients may not have any problems with their weight, but as the disease progresses, uh, a significant number of patients, uh, they uh, start experiencing uh, weight loss. Uh, so in these patients, there are multiple reasons uh, for weight loss. Uh, one of the main reasons for weight loss is uh, not eating well. Uh, so experts uh, uh, do think there are many other causes. Uh, for example, if patients have dyskinesia or so tremor, uh, some experts believe that uh, uh, the metabolism is fast uh, due to constant motion and uh, therefore the use of energy is uh, on, uh, uh, on, on constant basis or increased and uh, uh, because of not uh, uh, complete um, uh, to, to keep up uh, this use of energy, uh, so uh, the, uh, the, the metabolism is uh, fast and uh, uh, patient's uh, need uh, is more, uh, but they don't increase their uh, intake, so the weight loss uh, may be the result of all uh, this uh, cycle. Uh, so <clears throat> most patients, they start eating less. Uh, due to multiple reasons, uh, because most patients are uh, not mobile, they are uh, sitting most of the time in wheelchair or lying in bed as the disease progresses uh, beyond uh, stage 3. And therefore, um, their appetite decreases. If they are not uh, exercising, then the appetite further decreases and therefore uh, these patients will not eat well. The other causes are constipation. So if patients have constipation, uh, then as a result of constipation, you know, patient's appetite decreases, uh, uh, the <clears throat> uh, nauseous feeling uh, because of uh, multiple reasons uh, is uh, also a reason of not eating well. Uh, these patients have trouble chewing, they are slow in chewing, and uh, you know, they take much longer time to finish their meals. So as a result, uh, these patients um, uh, yeah, PO oral intake uh, is decreased, uh, so uh, due to these reasons, uh, patients uh, start experiencing uh, weight loss. In these patients, we, we, we tell them to increase their uh, uh, oral intake, uh, uh, change their diet to high caloric diets, uh, uh, and uh, the proper maintenance of it is important because some patients uh, may become very frail and thin, uh, and therefore. Uh, they don't have enough cushion of muscles. If they fall, they can get fractures. And weight loss uh, leads to other complications as well. Uh, so we tell these patients to eat well. They can add ensure uh, with uh, their food uh, and also uh, changing their diets to high chloric, as I said, is also helpful. <clears throat> we have another question. Uh, does uh, Parkinson's cause urinary bladder problems? As the disease progresses, yes, patients start uh, feeling uh, uh, trouble with their bladder. Most patients uh, develop uh, uh, urgency of urination, increase uh, frequency of urination. Uh, the, uh, the wall of the urinary bladder um, is made by detrusor muscle. So detrusor muscle uh, in the bladder becomes uh, hyperactive, uh, even if there is a, a small amount of urine in the bladder. 
so these patients uh, will uh, notice that uh, they can't hold and they feel a need to visit the washroom to urinate uh, quickly and they have to go more often and they have to rush. Also, in addition to uh, hyperactivity of uh, detrusor muscle, uh, these patients uh, uh, have uh, a uh, lack of coordination between the uh, sphincter of the urinary bladder uh, and uh, the wall of the urinary bladder. Uh, ideally, when the wall of the urinary bladder uh, contracts or uh, shrinks, uh, the, the sphincter of urinary bladder should open uh, to urinate, but sometimes a a uh, lack of coordination between these two activities happens and these patients uh, uh, get into trouble and they feel that they, in spite of going to the washroom, they feel that they have not uh, emptied their bladder fully. And sometimes the co-contraction of bladder and uh, urinary wall could happen and uh, then in these cases uh, patients uh, may not be able to urinate as properly. <coughs> In uh, um, these patients, uh, uh, they need to visit washroom uh, during the daytime, again and again happens, and uh, they uh, sometimes uh, are not able to plan their trip going outside of home, maybe very uncomfortable, because they may f feel a need uh, to visit washroom multiple times if they're going to a mall or doing any other activity. Uh, in other cases, uh, these patients have uh, 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 trouble at night time. Uh, at night time, uh, they have to wake up multiple times to go to the washroom and uh, uh, they have to urinate again and again. This leads um, to uh, their uh, sleep interruption and therefore uh, they have to wake up multiple times. Their nighttime sleep is affected, which can lead to daytime sleepiness. <coughs> the, this uh, uh, could be uh, uh, due to other problems uh, in males, such as prostate issues. If, uh, as patients uh, become elderly, they start getting prostate problems. And in patients with prostate problems, uh, they might have uh, very similar uh, type of problems. They might have uh, uh, need to urinate more often at nighttime. And when they go to a washroom, their uh, stream of urine is not as powerful as it should be. And uh, they may not empty their bladder uh, completely or they may feel a delay in the initiation of urination. So all these uh, problems uh, uh, could uh, mimic uh, the prostate problems and patients who are on medications such as diuretics, the uh, water pill in, in, in people known as water pill. So uh, these diuretics may also make patients uh, feel uh, the need to go uh, again and again at night time especially uh, so and there are certain other medications as well as certain liquids uh, so they could also uh, lead to increased urination therefore these uh, patients especially the males uh, they have to be uh, seen by urologists so the other causes of uh, increased uh, urinary bladder problems uh, could be addressed a small number of patients uh, may have uh, uh, a small number of patients may have trouble uh, with uh, the urinary retention, the retention of urine, as uh, com in contrast to increased urination again and again, they might have trouble initiating urination. So we tell these patients uh, that at night time they should uh, uh, not drink fluids in the late, uh, late evenings and also they should avoid fluids which lead to increased urine formation such as caffeine or tea, uh, etc. Uh, so in the daytime these patients should have uh, a, a timed urination. Uh, in, even if they don't feel a need, they could fix a time that they will go to washroom and urinate. And before going out, it's very important that these patients uh, may urinate uh, before so that uh, when they are outside of home, they don't feel a uh, need to go to the washroom again and again. Uh, we have another questions. Uh, uh, another question: Can you give us some tips regarding the care and uh, treatment of uh, Parkinson's patients? So, uh, as a care partner to a Parkinson's patient, uh, a, a one should. Uh, uh, try to learn the disease itself uh, so that uh, you know, with the patient uh, they can uh, 
uh, make a team to 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 help them and uh, uh, to improve the quality of life of a patient. Uh, so the uh, one uh, one of the uh, most important thing is that knowing uh, the details of disease uh, from uh, uh, correct resources. Having correct information about the disease is important. Um, when you have correct information about the disease, then you would know uh, why patient is uh, having certain symptoms, uh, uh, whether these symptoms are, are, are related to Parkinson's disease or they are due to some other reasons, and whether uh, something can be done to modify these uh, uh, symptoms or improve these symptoms because there are many other um, non-pharmacological techniques which use, which if used uh, with Parkinson disease medications, they help patients to improve their quality of life. Uh, <clears throat> so knowing uh, the uh, disease very well is uh, always helpful. Knowing about the patient, uh, what are the limitations of patients, uh, what patients can do, what they can do physically as well as emotionally. Uh, avoiding, uh, uh, avoiding placing demands on patients which are beyond their, uh, uh, beyond their limits. And at the same time, uh, not, um, uh, at the same time avoiding to do things which uh, they can do themselves because sometimes a care partner might uh, try to help them or speak uh, uh, for the person or do things which patient can do themselves. Uh, so I always tell patients that they should try to do their things by themselves and as long as uh, uh, longer they are doing these things by themselves, longer they uh, would be active and they would be independent. But as the disease progresses, patients uh, not only need uh, the care partner emotionally, but the need of uh, physical uh, uh, dependence also increases. So, so uh, watching patients carefully uh, that how their symptoms are progressing, if they are developing any new symptoms, uh, maintaining a book with questions at home. If you see any new symptoms in patients, uh, writing down these symptoms and uh, then taking that book to the physician to the neurologist on their follow-up visits and asking them questions. Uh, also, at the same time, uh, noticing the effect of medications. If a medication has uh, led to improvement of symptoms, that's a very positive sign. Uh, the care partner should make a note and tell the physician so that physician knows that there is uh, a significant improvement and they can uh, continue the medication or if they if the medication is not helping uh, fully, then they can adjust the dose of the medication or frequency of the medication. So noting the effect of medication on the patient is very important. And if patient is depend, uh, if patient is developing any complications of treatment or side effects of treatment, for example, if the if the patient has been started on some newer medication and they develop some issues like they develop a swelling of the legs, they develop any rash, or they develop excessive daytime sleepiness. At the same time, uh, and, and, and then taking these um, uh, side effects and talking to the physician. And at the same time, other uh, uh, issues like behavioral issues, watching patients uh, uh, for their behaviors, if they have become more socially withdrawn, if they have started to uh, remain quiet if their speech has decreased in content and if they have started uh, uh, avoiding taking part in family discussions or if they try to um, spend uh, uh, more time alone. So these behaviors sh should be watched closely, they should be noted and uh, then uh, when they see their neurologist they should be brought in attention. Uh, to the neurologist. If the, pa if the care partner is a, a spouse of the patient, then noting if they are still able to maintain intimate relationships uh, with the spouse uh, and if they cannot, uh, then having an open discussion with the patient, reassuring them your faithfulness because in advanced stages of Parkinson's disease, patients may develop paranoia, uh, which can be towards their family members, towards their spouse or children, and uh, then this may lead to further complications. This is not uncommon in patients with advanced Parkinson's disease who develop psychosis. So reassuring them time to time your faithfulness, discussing things openly, and uh, and also discussing them options, uh, other options uh, uh, of the intimacy. Uh, so 
these things are very important as a care partner. And if patients have uh, issues like hallucinations, in those uh, issues are not uh, you know, arguing with patients uh, or neither enforcing their hallucinations, uh, gently explaining them and that these hallucinations are not real. Uh, and uh, as long as uh, patient understand uh, these things, uh, so uh, that uh, is fine. And um, uh, if patients uh, uh, don't understand this, then you can always discuss with physician and uh, these things can be treated. So uh, keeping this in mind uh, that uh, uh, patient uh, is undergoing uh, a lot of stress, if patients uh, uh, develop uh, memory issues, uh, then uh, talking to uh, uh, talking to uh, uh, the neurologist about uh, uh, these uh, uh, the issues. Uh, sorry, I got interrupted with a phone call. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> um, I was saying that uh, watching patients closely. Uh, is always important uh, than educating patients time to time because patients may not be able to spend uh, that much time to learn about the disease. So <clears throat> educating them uh, about the various aspects of disease uh, and also uh, watching uh, patients uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to avoid falls. If patients develop balance problems, and then watching them carefully, supporting them when they're walking, uh, making sure that they are using walking devices, uh, devices such as uh, uh, walkers uh, and quad canes uh, uh, to make sure that patients don't fall uh, is very important. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, supporting patients uh, uh, 24-7, uh, watching their medications if the patients are taking medications on time uh, and, uh, uh, and, and they're not missing any dose of medications. Uh, uh, in addition, furthermore, you can watch their diet. If they're eating on time, they're not losing weight uh, and their diet is healthy uh, and consists of adequate fiber and fluids. Uh, uh, so these uh, things uh, uh, are very important to make sure uh, that uh, patients uh, have good quality of life. Uh, we have another question. Is there anything we can do to slow the progression of Parkinson's disease? So, uh, Parkinson's disease, as uh, most of us know, is due to uh, uh, the uh, loss of dopaminergic neurons in brain. Uh, it's a pathological process. Uh, when most patients are diagnosed, they have lost about 50% of the neurons already. And because dopamine facilitates our movements, so movements become slow and the disease progresses. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the pathological process which is going on in the body uh, and uh, resulting in loss of dopaminergic neurons, uh, it, it continues on its pace. And uh, the medications, uh, uh, they uh, help the symptoms of patients. They help improve the quality of life of patients. Uh, they don't stop that uh, uh, process which is going on. However, if uh, mm -hmm. patients uh, don't take medications, then their symptoms progress very fast. And uh, before the availability of uh, levodopa in 1960s, patients used to live only for a uh, few years after the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. And these days we see patients uh, who have Parkinson's disease for 20 years or even more in certain cases. We know Muhammad Ali was uh, uh, fighting with Parkinson's disease for almost 35 years. Uh, so uh, with the proper medications, guidance and support, uh, patients can uh, live with this disease for decades, uh, whereas uh, uh, without any treatment, there are a certain number of patients they would uh, uh, say that if medication is uh, not able to stop the disease uh, progression, then why to take medications? That's not a correct attitude. Mm -hmm. So if patients don't take medication, the, their condition progresses very fast, whereas if patients take medications properly, uh, then their condition can uh, uh, lead uh, to significant improvement. However, having said this, the underlying process which is going on, uh, we are not able to stop it. As, uh, at this point, there is uh, no uh, definite uh, neuroprotective agent. Uh, 
uh, upon which uh, experts have any consensus. We have a question about uh, uh, constipation uh, and uh, Parkinson disease. Uh, uh, so another question came, what side effects should I expect from medications? So we will entertain the question of constipations later. Uh, so what side effects should I expect from medications? So with respect to medications, uh, uh, what I tell my patients, because what happens when you prescribe uh, medications, uh, uh, so patients say that are there any side effects. So how I begin uh, my discussion with them that uh, uh, there is not a single medication in the world which I think has no side effects. Every medication may have side effect, but it doesn't mean that they could happen to everyone or every side effect which is uh, listed on the package insert uh, which is given uh, with the, the medication, the small brochure which a pharmacist handles you or if you find on Google, it doesn't mean that this would happen to you. Uh, so uh, sometimes patients are so afraid that they, uh, they, they don't start medication. So every medication has different uh, uh, side effects. Uh, for example, the commonly, most commonly used medication, levodopa, uh, levodopa uh, can uh, uh, cause uh, trouble with the nausea. Patients have um, uh, GI upset. Uh, they have a nauseous feeling, bloating of belly, uh, and as a result, they might have decreased appetite, um, and patients may feel a lightheadedness or dizziness. Uh, some patients, uh, uh, in some cases, may experience hallucinations uh, uh, in uh, late stages of disease. And so there are many other uh, uh, side effects of these medications, uh, which... Uh, are beyond the discussion of uh, this uh, uh, session. Uh, so uh, uh, some patients may feel uh, uh, more sleepy uh, after taking medication. They might uh, feel that uh, they are tired or they have a uh, need to go to bed. <clears throat> Other patients uh, with uh, medications such as dopamine agonist, uh, uh, such um, as Mirapax or Premipaxol uh, or Rotigotine, uh, these patients might uh, uh, feel um, uh, that uh, nauseous feeling as well, and uh, sometimes they feel um, oversleepy or more sleepy in the daytime after taking medications and the excessive daytime sleepiness, and sometimes they could have uh, sudden sleep attacks. Uh, and they might be doing any activity and they have a risk of falling asleep suddenly. Uh, other patients... Uh, uh, may have uh, trouble with hallucinations or cognitive effects uh, due to dopamine agonists. The behavioral side effects uh, also could happen in a small number of patients, uh, uh, such as these patients uh, start involving in activities uh, of uh, doing things uh, on compulsive, uh, uh, compulsive basis, such as compulsive shopping. They start buying things. We had a patient once, uh, he used to buy screwdrivers, uh, so uh, there are patients um, who would uh, get involved and they would uh, buy all sorts of uh, uh, things which they don't need. Uh, and uh, some patients have compulsive eating. They would uh, uh, yeah, overeat and in patients with diabetes this could become a problem. Uh, Sometimes they would wake up at night time, they would eat uh, uh, several times during the night and then go back to sleep and some patients start uh, uh, overspending, they start shopping, uh, or uh, some patients may develop hypersexuality. So dopamine agonists uh, could lead to these problems, uh, and therefore the physicians need to screen these patients uh, uh, on every visit. And sometimes some of the side effects may be pleasurable to patients, and therefore uh, because of this pleasure they experience uh, due to these side effects, uh, some uh, certain patients may uh, may not be able to report these uh, side effects to the physicians or sometimes they might not know that this is related to medication. So it's always important to uh, start this discussion on follow-up visits and ask uh, the family member who is accompanying patients uh, uh, about this 
uh, and uh, asking them in detail. Um, uh, these side effects, it's always helpful because sometimes these side effects could be a risk uh, to the safety of the patients. Other medications such as monoamine B oxidase inhibitors like uh, selegiline or rosagiline, they could cause, uh, they could potentiate the side effects of levodopa. So selegiline could cause uh, sleep problems, therefore uh, patients, uh, if they take selegiline in the evenings, they might not be able to fall asleep till late. So we uh, ask these patients, uh, we tell these patients to take uh, uh, the last dose of selegiline in the early afternoon so that uh, <clears throat> they don't um, uh, stay awake uh, till late night. Uh, Rosagiline can uh, uh, cause uh, uh, side effects such as uh, joint pains and arthralgia. Uh, it can also potentiate the side effects of levodopa. Uh, so uh, other drugs such as amantadine uh, could cause leg edema. Uh, dopamine agonists also could cause uh, leg edema, rupinirol, uh, as well as premipexol uh, are known to cause leg edema in a small number of patients. Amantadine could also cause leg swelling and it could also cause uh, rash uh, such as um, it, it's like a web-like uh, typical rash which uh, we see in patients with amantadine. It's called levito reticularis. It mostly affects lower extremities. Sometimes it could affect the upper extremities as well. <clears throat> so the side effects are uh, uh, dependent upon the medication which a person is taking. Um, the COMT inhibitors, when they are taken with levodopa, they could also potentiate the side effects of levodopa. They could also cause diarrhea or orange color discoloration uh, of the urine. Uh, so uh, one need to be aware of these side effects. But, however, we suggest patients not to be preoccupied with these things because some of the uh, side effects which they experience, they may disappear uh, within a couple of weeks of starting the medications and then patients may find that they have no problem taking that certain medication. So sometimes patients get uh, over uh, um, uh, scared or over anxious about uh, these things. So I always tell patients that uh, uh, it's uh, this uh, sheet which has side effects. This lists every single side effect which has uh, happened um, around the world. So it doesn't mean that uh, you will face this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so however, uh, the care partners and patients uh, should watch them carefully because some of the side effects may uh, be undesirable and uh, in certain cases the medication may need to be changed or switched to a different medication or stop. So, and other um, question we have, uh, uh, what, uh, what exercise program should PD patients be doing? Uh, with respect to exercise, uh, the exercise uh, is uh, uh, very important. Uh, I always tell patients that uh, there is not a single patient who cannot benefit from exercise. Uh, at any stage of the disease. Exercise is helpful to every p patient with Parkinson's disease at every stage. Uh, however, the exercise should be tailored uh, according to the capacity of patients. Uh, so as the stage of patient, uh, as the stage of the disease progresses, uh, then the exercises uh, also uh, change for patients. For example, patients uh, who have uh, very early onset uh, disease or in the beginning stages when patients don't have any balance problems, they, their mobility is good. So uh, any type of aerobic exercises uh, like uh, uh, biking, uh, gardening, uh, walking, uh, jogging, running, uh, doing treadmill uh, is very good. And then uh, and these exercises should be done on a regular basis. Then the disease progresses a little bit more then patients may add, uh, uh, may add exercises which uh, uh, are not that aggressive uh, and, uh, they, uh, they, 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 uh, and the risk of falling uh, uh, is, is uh, much less uh, in the exercises uh, uh, such as uh, Tai Chi or slow motion exercises. So patients uh, these patients can also do resistance exercises such as uh, light weight lifting so, or, uh, uh, or walking, uh, but they have to be very careful. 
to avoid the risk of falls. When the disease progresses further, uh, then these patients uh, could do exercises uh, when, when, when their mobility is much less and they uh, are mostly limited to uh, wheelchair or bed, then passive exercises have a great role. So passive exercises of a, joint, a range of motion of the uh, joints of body should be done on a regular basis. Uh, this could be done with the help of a care partner. Involvement of patient is always uh, very helpful in these exercises. The range of motion exercises keep uh, the uh, mobility and uh, range of motion intact and they keep the muscles uh, strong and a patient uh, stamina is uh, remained and patients are able to uh, to cope their disease better. With exercise, patients uh, also improve their sleep, they improve constipation and also uh, patients uh, uh, have uh, uh, less risk of uh, uh, developing depression if they are socially active, they are exercising. Uh, so uh, any type of exercise uh, is is good as long as it's safe for patient and it's uh, it's according to the capacity of patient. A physiotherapist can uh, further uh, help patients to identify what type of exercises are good for them. Uh, patients should uh, uh, be very careful about falling if they're uh, quite sick or if they develop fever or any other condition then they should stop exercising. If patients uh, develop shortness of breathing or any chest pain they should be assessed by a cardiologist and then exercise program can be tailored according to the uh, need of the patients. Uh, 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 overall, we suggest patients to exercise at least three to five days a week on a regular basis, and uh, uh, this has a great role in maintaining their overall condition. I think uh, we are about to finish time uh, here, and uh, so thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, you have. Uh, uh, you find uh, these sessions helpful. These are very informal and uh, a friendly discussion uh, with the people about their questions and concerns uh, about Parkinson's disease. Uh, uh, there is a time change uh, due to daylight saving in Canada. Uh, so today, this is 11 o'clock. Uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, we started at 11 o'clock uh, this morning. Uh, so. We will be uh, there next Sunday at 11 o'clock. Uh, please pass on uh, uh, this message to your friends and others uh, who can join our discussion and they might find it helpful. Please also post comments. Uh, I, have been, uh, I have been advised by the uh, IT team of uh, World Parkinson's program to request patients to uh, post any positive comments or any type of feedback which can help us to improve these sessions uh, on the website. So the address of the website is uh, www.pdprogram.org. Uh, uh, P -D -P -R -O -G -R -A -M .org. So please visit the websites. The uh, brochures uh, are uh, uploaded uh, about Parkinson's disease, about the various aspects of Parkinson's disease on the website. And I think in 15 or 20 languages, the brochures are updated and uh, uh, patients can download these brochures and learn more about the disease. Mm, and uh, join us uh, next Sunday again. The website is www.pdprogram.org. So we will see you next Sunday in uh, live Facebook session of World Parkinson's Program. This is the only uh, organization which is providing medications, walking aids, uh, uh, and educational uh, literature about Parkinson's disease in more than 20 languages. Uh, in, uh, it is used in many countries around the world. Uh, so thank you again. See you next Sunday.